what's up? Hope everybody out there is having a good day and much appreciated you guys making some time out of your busy schedule to watch the video. That's always uh, much appreciated around here. And today we're gonna have a full length conversation, seminar, building foundations on frog fishing. I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of good juice on frogs. Um, we've talked about frogs in the past on and off, you know, technique specific stuff. But what I wanted today is I sort of wanna lay out a foundation uh, for everything frog related, because in my opinion, we're getting, we're getting into the fall month of the year, September, October are some of the best months to fish frog. So I'm going to give you guys a lot of stuff, what I've learned about here. So anyway, before we get started in the video, just real quick, a couple of housekeeping tips here. Anybody out there is interested in booking an on the water lesson with me this fall, just shoot me a private message on my Facebook page, Randy Block at Professional Angler. And also please, uh, if you have a time, Go over to fishingmoment.com. Got a lot of really good stuff going on there. We got the new website called Bass Fishing Declassified, a part of Fish the Moment. We got our lake map breakdowns. We got our virtual fishing lessons. Just check everything out, fishingmoment.com. Um, bunch of good stuff to, to learn a lot about bass fishing over there. <clears throat> okay, guys, let's talk about frog fishing here a little bit. Now, I'm going to, this frog fishing, I could talk for hours on it, but I'm going to try to give you guys just sort of a foundational approach. And like I said, if you've seen some of the past videos, sometimes we talked about color. Sometimes we talked about like a walking frog versus a popping frog. I'm going to sort of just sort of give you guys a full mix of this thing for a lot of people that don't know a lot about frog fishing. Now, first of all, the thing about frogs here is the, you've got two primary types here. You, you do have the walking frog like this uh, mega bass, big gabbit, and then you've got a popping frog, just like a, you know, a straight, straighter popping frog. You know, the gabbit sort of has a popping thing, but it's more of a walker. But anyway, the two differences is the popper is designed to be fished more in a small area. And the walking frog, though it sort of walks like a, you know, just a, like a Zerispook or something. That's the way this thing works. It's designed to fish uh, more open water where you can cover more water with it. So at the time that you would want to use a, a popping frog is like, <clears throat> say if you're fishing around lily pads, where you've got little openings that big around. A popping frog is you can just pop it and let it sit there real still, and it draws those fish out from that popping action in small tight corners. Where the walking frog, I like to throw it, for example, like I'll skip it up underneath a boat dock or underneath an overhanging tree where I'm not coming over vegetation and I'll just walk it out just like a topwater plug. And that's when the, the walking style works really good. You can also catch them on the walking frog over matted vegetation. Traditionally, frog fishing was associated with matted vegetation. Guys would fish them over duckweed, hydrilla, milfoil, that type of stuff that was matted. It's still, that's one of the best ways to catch them. Um, but there's more versatility to a frog than just fishing them over matted vegetation. There, a frog, you know, a walking frog, like this big gabbit, it is a, it's basically a walking topwater plug. It's just a soft water walking topwater plug, real subtle. So anywhere that you're getting bit on topwater, you can catch them on a frog in that. I've, I've caught them just frog in open water before with it. But those are the two applications for it. So next, let's talk a little bit about colors because colors are critical in frog fishing. Guys, I use three different colors, basic colors in frogs. I'll use a black, and the time that I like black is, you know, say for example, if it's a sunny that that's if it's sunny out and i'm trying to trying to concentrate on shade like if again if i'm fishing it under docks or on shady banks or that type of stuff if it's sunny partly cloudy and the water is fairly clean you know something like that's over a foot and a half or two foot of visibility that's when i like the black color it works really good the brighter colors this is a sort of a chartreuse with a sort of a pale bot bottom on it this type of a color or like a white, a solid white, is really good on cloudy days or if it's rainy um, or if the water is a little bit more off colored, like if you're down in that 12 inch visibility, the, the white chartreuse or bright frog is gonna work pretty good. And then on days where I'm fishing extremely clear water, like over three or four foot visibility, and I'm walking as I want some type of a translucent color, something, something that's got sort of like a see-through. So these are my, my three basic color choices that I use right here. I keep it pretty simple with that. Um, one of the things that you're going to find out about matted vegetation is if you're fishing a true mat, like, um, like, duck, like matted duckweed or milfoil or something like that, 
color doesn't really play that big of a difference unless you have little holes in it. Now, if you have little openings, maybe like that big around, using a white or a brighter frog sometimes can draw those fish up through it. But if you don't have those little openings and it's a, like it's a, a thin mat, um, colors, they're, they're really hitting the movement over the color and that type of thing. A couple things to line. Line size with this, most of the time I'm fishing 50 pound test, Seaguar, Smackdown braided line with it. Um, I don't ever go to 65. I don't think you need 65. 50 pound test, cast better. You can cast it farther with it. I've never ever broke it one single time. You can, you, you can, you know, you're not gonna break it. It's like freaking rope. But I think you can cast it a little bit. You do wanna use braided line all the time with a frog. On your frog rod, make sure that you don't have something that overpowers it. You've got to have a rod that you're able to impart some action on. So normally I like a seven foot rod, some type of a medium to medium heavy action. You don't need a broomstick because the braid, you've got no stretch whatsoever. I know some guys that use cranking rods for their frog fishing with braided line because when they set the hook, there's no stretch on the braid but the crankbait rod being so a softer tip allows them to fight the fish better and they don't lose it. So don't overpower the, your rod for frog fishing because a lot of people think that's what you need to do to jack those fish. Um, main thing with that is frog fishing has, unless you're fishing like an open field of matted vegetation or something like that, one of the big aspects of frog fishing is your casting accuracy. Because when you're fishing a walking frog like this, you're trying to put that bait into hard to reach areas. You're skipping it. You want that frog to skip up underneath there. A lot of times I'll take a frog and I'll flip it just like I will a jig or a creature bait, just make an underhanded pitch. And you want to get it into those tight places because the, the key frog water is the water you can't really access with other type of bait. So that's one of the things you really have to work on is your casting accuracy. If you're not, if you're not a good skipper, get you a stiff, heavy action seven foot spinning rod put you some 30 pound test braid on there and you can skip that sucker you know 30 foot back up underneath overhanging stuff works really good with that but anyway guys that's just some overviews with that a couple other things you might want to do is uh, it'll increase your hookups if you're not in real thick cover uh, take these hooks and bend them out just about an eighth of an inch that'll help you out quite a bit you can't do that if you're fishing over grass because it will get caught on the grass but if you're skipping it under open areas that can help. And also with the skirt, I trim the skirts back to where they're just about an inch long. You don't need this skirt on here. This is the frog is where you get the action. So cut that skirt back to about an inch long and you won't lose as many fish and get as many short strikes. So that's just a general overview guys. We could go into a lot more detail, but that's gonna get you all started. And uh, give them a try man, because uh, you know, like I said, September, October, is a great time of year to fish frogs when the water temperature starts cooling down into the uh, into the 60s and 70s like it is right now. Um, it's going to be a really good way to catch some good fish. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Please hit that subscribe button, and we'll talk later. See you.